Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our new podcast series, Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Skadokataya, CEO and founder of JSA, along with my fabulous co-host, top B2B social media influencer, Mr. Evan Christel. Evan, you're looking good today. Thanks so much. Looking forward to our next guest. And I see you have a brand new background. So you've moved. I have. I'm officially further south now uh, in California, in Laguna Beach. Um, now I can't see. I can't see your wall behind you. But do you collect art or collectibles or tchotchkes? Uh, I do have a fabulous piece of artwork, but it's in Virginia. But I'm, yeah, I, I do every every now and then something moves, you know, moves your soul, and you're like, I need to have it, but very rarely. So, yeah, I feel the same about art. Now, what about digital art? Have you been following this phenomenon of digital art or technically non-fungible tokens where creators can create essentially a, a coin or a, a blockchain-based uh, digital piece of art and then sell it out into the marketplace? I mean, that's insanity. So uh, people are paying millions for, for, for this, tell us. People are paying millions, tens of millions today, an NFT, as they're called, sold for $69 million at Christie's. Um, the uh, the uh, artist Banksy, who, you know, we've all seen his paintings around London, had a piece of art that was sold for tens of millions of pounds. The buyer actually burned the original, but kept the digital version Oh. the NFT uh, for himself. So are, are we in peak um, insanity now or, or what, what's it, what's going on, Jamie? I mean, uh, we're all living our digital reality, like reality oh, always, right? I mean, we're, we're here on Zoom. This is like, I feel like it's somehow related to the pandemic, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I, I may even have an Evan coin uh, uh, coming out soon. So we'll, we'll talk about that the next episode. In the meantime, I think we have a great guest. Yes, I am very excited to introduce you guys. Um, of course, you know, we love our guests. We love diving into their background stories, their careers, highs and lows, unique perspectives on the future of our industry. And today we are very honored to welcome Todd Tweedy. He's the Director of Sales and Marketing for Blackfoot Communications. Todd, welcome. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, Evan. Yeah, good to see you. Um, you're in the beautiful state of Montana. I, I see here that you were founded in 1954 at Blackfoot Communications as a local cooperative telephone company. Is that kind of like socialism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, a, a different business model, if you will, for, for yeah. service providers or telecoms. Um, we've got shareholders. Those are our cooperative members. And uh, we're actually really proud of that heritage. And on more than one occasion, I've seen our CEO, he literally pumps his fist in the air and says, cooperatives are cool. Um, so we're very proud of that heritage. And, and believe it or not, some of those first cooperative members they were Montana business owners, Montana ranchers, Montana farmers, and, and it's gone down through their, their family. And, and that actually explains the, the uh, Evans outfit today, right? <laughs> Range hat on. Yes. Um, yes, I love it. And, and I, I love cooperatives actually, uh, really shows how, uh, how important the service that you're providing uh, really serves the community, makes people rally around it uh, and feel, feel as owners. So it's, it's amazing. Um, so tell us a little bit, Todd, about yourself and how you got involved in the telecom industry. Sure. Um, a trip down men memory lane, lane here. So I've been a Montana resident for uh, about 21 years and I worked for three different uh, telecom companies in, in that period of time. And the start was, um, I don't know, somewhat uh, opportun opportunistic, maybe somewhat uh, intentional. I had worked for a couple of IT VARs and um, personally found the WAN, the wide area network side of that business, uh, interesting. And early in my 30s, again, I'm dating myself here, but early in my 30s, I guess I was struck by the entrepreneurial bug and uh, decided to be a partner in a startup uh, ISP company. 
And it was long enough ago that we were talking 56K modems and dial-up at, at the time. But really, that was my first job, if you will, my first foray into the, the telecom industry. So you're at the present time deploying fiber optic communications, taking Montana into the 21st, 22nd century. So how did you get there? I mean, what, what have you learned uh, over the years to get you to this, you know, this point in the telecom world? Well, it, it, it's, it, it's interesting to me. And I, in, in some regard, I feel like it's a little ironic, uh, you know, fiber optics, fiber communication. It's been around for decades, but today it is absolutely the backbone of, of telecom infrastructure. And, uh, you know, one of our big focuses recently is fiber to the home for those cooperative members we were talking about uh, just a minute ago. Uh, but we also do business with several of the, the major uh, mobile carriers, the mobile providers in the U.S. And those towers are serviced. They're fed by, by uh, fiber optic cables. And there's kind of this interesting... Um, You've certainly heard the, the, the phrase digital divide, and in some cases that's referring to economic uh, uh, disparity. Well, in the rural West, uh, sometimes that's referring to just the availability of assets and, and uh, uh, 5G right now is such a buzz, buzz phrase or buzz term, and it, it's very exciting and the capabilities associated with 5G versus 4G, 3G, I mean, exciting times. But those technologies tend to be deployed first in the NFL cities, right? Where the population is the most dense, where you have the most fiber optic assets at your disposal. Well, you get to very rural Montana and there might or might not be fiber available. So when we hear all this buzz about 5G, um, you know, in certain corners of the rural West, certain corners of Montana, honestly, it's, it's a question mark when those type of services will be available simply because of the infrastructure that may or may not be uh, present. And you know, Todd, as we talk about Blackfoot, we should really mention to um, your, your fabulous reviews, your customer, uh, customer success. Um, you guys are, are really driven for a culture of excellence, um, particularly around customer service. How, what does it take to build a great team? Shoot, I feel like we could have a series, uh, a podcast series on, on building successful teams. And, and I, I really don't think there's a, a single silver bullet or a single um, ingredient. Um, I, I mean, it starts with talented and, and dedicated professionals. And, and then I think, uh, you know, starting at the top with, with the leadership, building a crystal clear understanding of, of what we're here to do. What, what's our focus? How do we make money? What are we really good at? And, and maybe some things that we're not so good at and, and be willing to, to walk away from those things that we aren't so good at. Um, and I've heard our, our CEO, Jason Williams, our CEO talk about, uh, you, know, you know, Evan, you commented how long we've been around being founded in 54. Well, he wants us to be around for another six decades. Yes. And what do we need to be doing from a leadership standpoint, from a strategy standpoint to, to make sure that happens? So it's really easy to get caught up in tactical things in the here and now, but uh, I think one of the things that's critical to be uh, building a successful team is always have a vision. Where are we going to be in three years, five years, seven years? And what, we need, what do we need to do to transform our organization, meet our customer needs, transform our team to, to be successful in that regard? Um, I, I'm sure all of us have some folks in our professional career that we would look at as, as true mentors. And I can remember those. this was a gentleman I worked with years and years ago. You can tell the impact that he had on me because I can still remember to this day some of his quotes. And one of them that uh, I am so keen of, it was, uh, you can't lead where you won't go and you can't teach what you don't know. Which again, from a leadership standpoint, um, yes, you can surround yourself with, with talented individuals, but uh, it starts at the top. That vision starts at that top, the dedication starts at that top. And then hopefully you can impart uh, your team members with that vision and that focus. And, and hopefully success is the product of, of that approach. So, Todd, one of the most interesting aspects of your career right now is on the carrier and services side, working with predominantly uh, rural customers around Montana. That looks like a challenge, uh, given some of the photos I, I saw from your customers in a photo contest, give us some good stories there. Do, do bison regularly dig up your your fiber optic lines or what, what's going on out there in the countryside? 
Yeah, well, again, I, I, I compare and contrast what goes on in, in Montana to some of the largest metropolitan areas, the NFL cities, uh, where you've got, you know, significantly uh, population density, you've per perhaps got a lot of fiber. And oh, by the way, you, you don't have a mountain range in the middle uh, between two cities or, or a mountain range between uh, two uh, sites where you want line of sight. So the topography can be a challenge in, in Montana because uh, you don't always have line of sight or line of sight can always be assumed. Um, the lack of population density, of course, there's all kinds of economics of scale that come into play when you're building fiber, deploying networks. And, uh, you know, a little while ago, we were talking about uh, the difference in population between Southern California and, and Montana. Uh, Southern California has 10x the population that the entire state of Montana does. So the economics of, of plowing fiber in some of the rural uh, areas can be challenging. And, and oftentimes uh, that's where uh, federal subsidies come into play, uh, FCC subsidies. Matter of fact, um, Blackfoot did just recently participate in the rural development development opportunity fund auction. And we were successful in, in, in winning some of those areas. And uh, again, that's a, an FCC subsidy. So that will actually help expand our, our uh, network footprint, which has advantages to both our residential and our wholesale or our carrier services customers. I, I love this um, you know, comparison between um, rural Montana versus uh, other metropolitan areas. Um, and I have a hunch that what you're going to say uh, to this question that I like to, to often uh, ask our guests probably might be different uh, due, to, due to location, location, location. But what do you see as the top telecom trends that are keeping, um, keeping you guys awake at night or are you keeping a watch on? One was what I touched on a little while ago that uh, 5G is such a buzzword right now. It, it's an exciting technology. It's an exciting time. Uh, but I'm a little bit worried in, in certain corners of, of the rural West do we really have the infrastructure to support that? Um, when you're talking about connectivity to a, a cell tower, we have conversations with, with the providers today that they're talking about, well, we need a one gig uh, backhaul connection. Uh, there's talk of 10 gig. Um, and I know this might get a little technical, but some of the, the small rural providers in Montana, their entire core network, their main fiber might only be 10 gig. So how can they possibly service multiple cell towers if they're, they've got network limitations? So that is one thing that I would say it kind of keeps us awake at night. And it's an expensive uh, situation to uh, solve. It, I mean, it takes a lot of money. And, and, and hopefully the federal government can help us with, with that. The other one doesn't necessarily keep me awake at night, but it's a, a trend we're, we're keenly uh, keeping an eye on and, and embracing and, and, frankly, shifting our business model to hopefully... Uh, meet the marketplace needs, and that's managed services in SD-WAN. And, and many customers, uh, Blackfoot customers, Montana customers, customers across the United States, they're using an M MPLS network. Uh, very secure, uh, very reliable, unfortunately also very expensive. And, and one of the transitions is to a SD-WAN architecture where I'm using a deployment of appliances, deployment of devices, and then I go out and procure a couple of what's known as commodity circuits. Just think of uh, everyday broadband circuits. And I load balance and, and I create redundancy through the use of these commodity circuits. And there's studies that have been shown that just from a tax uh, saving standpoint, there can be a 40% uh, savings, OPEX savings, between an MPLS network and an SD-WAN network. So, Jamie, when we think of our enterprise customers and meeting their needs and, and how their business is trending, that was one we are keenly aware of and, and we're trying to keep uh, uh, our crosshairs on. Exciting stuff. And I, I really can't wait to hear more about the uh, broadband uh, funding and look forward to hearing some great stories on, uh, you know, rollout, uh, particularly in areas like education and healthcare, where there's just a huge gap between uh, you know, bigger cities and suburbs and rural communities. So uh, that's one of the pressing things in our country right now, I think. Uh, let me let me end here with uh, a few rapid fire questions. Uh, uh, and, you know, feel free to share the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, favorite movie and preferably something based in Montana, maybe a cowboy movie. What, what do you think? 
no wrong answers then, right, Evan? <laughs> I will be grading these, so yes, <laughs> man, don't worry. Um, so favorite Montana movie, River Runs Through It. Oh, a classic. Yes, uh, Robert Redford. Matter of fact, uh, when that movie was popular, I think that was early 90s, um, some of the economic development and, and, and tourist, uh, tourism businesses and offices in Montana said that movie did more to prop up their business, support their business than any advertising initiatives that they could ever do. Phenomenal. I'm going to rewatch that one. That's, a, that's definitely a classic. Weekend yeah. list, yeah. Yep. Uh, favorite sport or sports team? And I'm secretly hoping you'll say hunting and you'll tell us the pheasant story. <laughs> pheasant, but well, well, I'll be back. A, a passion of mine, but uh, favorite sports team, hands down, the Minnesota Vikings, the NFL. Uh, I grew up in Minnesota. My joke is I bleed purple. So uh, big Minnesota Viking fan. Well, there's always next year. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which you say a lot as a Minnesota Viking fan. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Uh, so number one spot in the world, you, you know, where would you like to go now the pandemic's uh, as an end in sight? What's on your bucket list? Oh, that one's tough. Um, Greece. Greece. The beaches in Greece look amazing. Yeah, I, I imagine you, you don't have beaches in Montana if I know my geography. <laughs> oh, no. You I, have the eighth grade geography, you're right. Ocean's a <laughs> long ways away. <laughs> Um, and so what do you, what do you know, people, the farmers around town, what, what would they, what, how would they describe you in one word? And, you know, this is, we have children listening, so please. Uh, passionate, passionate. Um, I've described myself trying to use more than one word as, as kind of the poster child for the work hard, play hard. So I've got professional passions. I've got personal passions. Passionate would probably be a, a good one word description. Awesome. One of our JSA core values, actually, to be passionate about for our clients and our industry and our team. Yeah. I love that one. Good job. <laughs> Thank you so much, Todd, for joining us. We really got such fabulous insight, not only on Blackfoot Communications, your company, but also your leadership, your insights into our industry. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. And if you guys enjoyed watching today's episode of Data Movers, please go ahead and check out jsa.net slash podcast, where we have uh, upcoming episodes being released every other week on Wednesday morning. So check us out there. And follow us on Twitter at Jay Scotto and Evan Kerstell and uh, look forward to networking. Yep. And as always, guys, networking. Yeah.